by the end of the day, I lost both of my big toenails. They fell off. And that continued to happen for like the next six years of my life. I'll always blame Lindsay Lohan for that. Hi in style, I'm Megan Fox and this is Let's Unpack That. Um, this is one of the first things I ever did. This is called Holiday in the Sun. Am I on the back? Shade, they didn't even put me on the back. There's not even a picture of me. Is my name down here on the bottom? No, name's not even in here. It was filmed in the Bahamas, that is accurate. Mary Kate and Ashley took us all out on a like a private chartered boat and we went to a private island in the middle of the Bahamas and we all dove for conch and uh, then we grilled it like in a bonfire on the beach. It was very castaway and very rugged but super luxurious at the same time and like elite, nothing I would have ever had access to because I was like 15 in a regular high school in Florida at the time and I remember just being like, whoa. And I remember seeing their closet and I was obsessed, which obviously they've become amazing designers since then. But their clothes were crazy, super jealous. Oh. Here we have pink duct tape. One of the first things I did with Colson after we did that movie together, um, I was back here for a couple of weeks and we were seeing each other, but not dating exclusively by any means on his end. I, I only date one person at a time, but he belonged to the streets, that's for sure. He asked me to do his music video and in one of the scenes he was totally naked in a red sauna uh, with nothing but duct tape on. And that was fun and we've been in love ever since. Okay, at first glance, it's a car, but see how it's moving? I'm not good at transforming them. I was in these movies. This is what sort of broke me into the industry. This is my, when I got my first real agent in Hollywood, the first audition he ever set me on was for Transformers. If Trey could see me right now, this is crazy. Fun fact, it was down to me and Blake Lively for that. I don't know if anyone knows that. It was between the two of us. And we were like screen testing against each other. And that changed my life. I mean, I didn't know it was a movie that size. I just thought it was like a movie. I didn't know it was a $150 million movie. So I went into it like la la la. And then it came out and it blew up and I was instantly like insanely famous and kind of shell-shocked and traumatized after that because I was just a kid. Like I was, I just turned 19 or something like that and it's not like I had any warm-up to it. I was just kind of like thrown into it and it's a wild, wild experience. I got a super vague knowledge of cars, maybe more than like the average person, but definitely not enough to pop a hood and do whatever I was doing. I'm lying, I don't know shit about cars. We have a rose quartz crystal. And I don't know, this is maybe like some type of jade. I'm really into everything metaphysical. I got into like shamanic work. I just went to Costa Rica to do like this really intense, immersive ayahuasca experience. But crystals are all a part of that. They change your vibration, they change your frequency. They're good for healing your body, for calming your nerves, um, for just about anything you can come up with, any ailment you have, there's a crystal for you. Oh, I am hella into astrology. I, I was into astrology most of my life, and now I do it for friends and family and anyone new that I meet. That was the first thing I did with Colson, actually. He was in my trailer, and I was like, why don't you sit down and we're gonna see if we're soulmates. And we kinda are. This is, wait, there's something else in here, hold on. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was in these movies, and a Michelangelo mask. I was super excited to book this. I loved these movies as a kid. I was a huge fan. And I went in on Valentine's Day to meet with the director, and I stayed for like six hours on Valentine's Day to convince them that they should give me the role. And we got to film them in New York, and the second one was like a really good experience for me. You know how you're little and you have a crush on like Simba or whatever when you're a kid, which is weird, but we all did it, so I don't give a I had a crush on Mikey, and then in the movies, they randomly wrote Mikey as having like this obsession with April O'Neil, who was me. And I love these. This is actually something I can show my kids pretty soon. They're getting old enough to watch a movie with mommy in it now. My oldest keeps begging to see Jennifer's body, but that ain't happening anytime soon. Um, I don't know what this is. Sid Arthur Farewell Concert 2004. Oh, yeah. This is from a movie I did called Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. I'd uh, stay in chat, but I don't want to stay in chat. We had this like dance dance revolution scene. 
and I had tennis shoes on, but they were half a size too small. And by the end of the day, I lost both of my big toenails. They fell off. And that continued to happen for like the next six years of my life. Like what, once you lose them once, they like never really grow back the same way. So I'll always blame Lindsay Lohan for that. This is a photo from the billboard red carpet. We had just gotten back from the jungle in Costa Rica on this ayahuasca journey, this like deep spiritual experience. It was dropped literally the night before back in the middle of Los Angeles. And it may have even been that morning straight into a fitting for the Billboard Awards. And my stylist was like, we want you to wear this. And I was like, I was just talking to God in the jungle. I'm not ready to wear that. So I put that on and we had this Peruvian tobacco left from the ceremony that's supposed to be, is also a plant medicine. It's supposed to ground you. And I was like, it. I'll just have some Peruvian tobacco. I'll wear this thing. We get to the awards and we get out of the car. I wish somebody had videotaped this. He gets out wearing this like sh basically shirtless Jim Morrison, wild ass Balmain, super rock star, whatever the f he's wearing in front of everyone that's working this event. He takes out this giant ass, it looks like a blunt. It's not, it's Peruvian tobacco. He's smoking it and then he's blowing it all over me to like cleanse me. People must have been like, these people are so I go. <laughs> this looks to be a child-sized Star Wars t-shirt. I guess it was it's become kind of infamous that I used to steal my Brian's oldest son, my technically my stepson's shirts when he was like six. And I would wear them and make them like, well, they were belly shirts because they were tiny. Which I thought was like, I didn't know that was so crazy. It's like I could go to a slutty store and buy a slutty shirt, or I could just wear a kid's t-shirt. What's the difference? Um, ah, I did a movie called Jennifer's Body. I guess there's a famous meme or a famous gif slash gif where I'm lighting my tongue on fire. That movie is the favorite movie I've ever done, like by far, and I've been looking for something like that ever since, and it's just one of those things, it's like a one of a kind. I don't know if I'll ever come across something like that. It like failed at the time, but has grown this like huge, maybe not even a cult following anymore because it's so popular now. I am still socially relevant. Every Halloween I see people dressed as Jennifer Check. My oldest son dresses as Jennifer Check, even though he doesn't know what that means yet. All he knows is I'm like a zombie cheerleader and he's obsessed. It's like over a decade later and people are still like, that was a f***ing good movie. And it was. I think I have a lot of things in common with Jennifer, which is why I played her so well. And if you ask my boyfriend, <laughs> there's definitely a Jennifer in there. He'll be like, I don't want to talk to Jennifer today. I am so easygoing when people know me, but there is a streak in there where like, I don't want to f*** with me. I am going to eat your soul and shit. It out, Mickey! I thought you only murdered boys. I go both ways. It's constant. A girl will come up to me and be like, you had a lot to do with me like identifying and understanding that I was gay or understanding that I was bisexual. And that is, of course, by far like the most moving, rewarding thing that, that I have experienced in my life, to be a part of something that helped people figure that out or helps people deal with that or feel better about that. But one of my favorite things I get called is being like a, a bi icon. And that is, that's one of the things I'm the most proud of.